Success. My guest today is um, Bing Bing from Pasadena. He has a Wilson Black magazine. He's an um, artist doing a lot of things for the community. How are you today, Bing Bing? Good, good, man. You know, I'm glad to be here. You know what I'm saying? On the low pass, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, I'm looking to, uh, you know, break some stuff down. <laughs> Can you give the people a brief intro about yourself, bro? Yeah, man, uh, you know, my name is Bing Bing, you know what I mean? I'm a rapper from Pasadena. Uh, I go by a few other aliases and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, to to make it brief, you know what I mean? I'm pretty much just an artist extraordinaire, you know what I mean? Very ambitious. And, uh, you know, I, I wake up in the morning ready to see how I can make a difference. So, uh, so the people are kind of like, uh, what kind of music are you into, man? Well, you know, it, it's, it's hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And when I say hip hop, you know, hip hop, not just music, but, you know, hip hop is an all inclusive culture, you know what I mean? So all the different elements of hip hop is, is pretty much what I'm into. But not just hip hop. I mean, I do like other genres of music. Uh, I like, uh, you know, other types of art, you know what I mean? Especially like visual art, you know? Uh, and, I, and I know I'm an artist because, you know, I, I, I myself have a a deep sense of appreciation for the things that other artists do, you know what I mean? So, you know, even though, like, for example, you know, I'm a songwriter, but but I got mad respect for freestylers, you know what I mean? Even though I'm not a freestyler, you know what I mean? So don't ask me to freestyle. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but you, know, just, you know, just like, you know, some freestylers have a hard time writing songs too, you know what I mean, oh, and yeah. vice versa. So, you know, I'm one of those songwriters who have a hard time freestyling, but I have the utmost respect for those that can do it well, you know. So what's your, like, top five rappers of all time, like? <laughs> you know, that's always a tough question, man. <laughs> you know, when I, when I be doing my show and I ask somebody like that, I get mad when they don't answer the question, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to answer the question, you know. Right. Uh, well, number one, I got to give it to me, you know what I'm all saying? Right, and, right. And, and I say that because, you know, I, I really don't tune in so much to the mainstream as I did when I was younger, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's really all about the local music scene. You know what I mean? And that's it's not, what it, it's not what it used to be. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I could give you, or I'll give you my top five, you know what I mean? It's me, all right, so look, me without saying it, so you already know, right? Yeah, but I know to be about right. that, yeah. So, so, number one, I'm going to go with Tupac, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Now, Tupac. now, this is, you know, Tupac, uh, when people talk about Tupac, it's always... Um, you know, they inspired them, they influenced, all that, all of that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, me, you know, when I listen to Tupac and when I look at, you know, the span of his career, you know, I, I find it actually relates to him in, in more than a few ways. You know what I mean? <clears throat> as far as the revolutionary. And, and recently, one thing I learned about him was that, you know, he really uh, was making steps to help curb gang violence. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. and, 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 you know, I think uh, that contributed to his demise too, you know what I'm saying, and uh, it was just one of those things that made me have such a profound respect for Tupac, you know what I mean, uh, <clears throat> Biggie does not make this list, <laughs> it's cool, it's yeah, you know, hey, hey, you know what I mean, for my interview with my top five, I'm gonna tell y'all, man, Biggie does not, he is not in there, you know what I mean, uh, with all due respect, you know what I mean, not to discredit, you know, Big for everything, but number two, you know, I would have to say, now, we just talking rappers or just artists? Go oh, rappers or artists. Bro. Okay. My number two would have to be Snoop. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Snoop Dogg. You know what I mean? These are cats that really move me. You know what I'm saying? They're really like, that. you know, not only did I find their music entertaining, but I actually got something from it. You know what I mean? That I could apply to my own life. You know what I mean? Every day. And <clears throat> I admit that, you know, some of my styles have rubbed off on, um, 
or some of my style I got from Snoop Dogg. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, speaking of that, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and name the rest of the top three because you helped me just find it. Uh, uh, it goes like this: Tupac, Snoop Dogg, uh, Nipsey Hussle, oh, yeah. right? Uh, Nipsey Hussle, The Game, oh, yeah. and Macklemore. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I say Macklemore, you know, that's always a controversial thing. You know, no one really understands this cat. You know what I'm saying? But I, I really credit him for his debut album, The Heist. Uh, oh, yeah. I think that was a great album, start to finish, uh, <clears throat> ultimately. Um, and, uh, you know, these are this top five that I just gave you, Pac, Snoop, Nipsey, uh, uh, Game, and Macklemore, these are the cats that I feel I got my style from. So, like, when I hear my stuff... When I hear my new stuff at its best, I hear those individuals. You know what I'm saying? In, in the context of, you know, my, my music. So, yeah, you know, Snoop, you know, uh, was one of the first artists I ever witnessed. You know what I mean? Just in life. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you know, Snoop Dogg's like Kobe Bryant. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I got to see him when he started and ended. You know what I mean? Career, you know? Exactly. So, you know, that that's that means a lot to me. Uh, Snoop Dogg is... is more legendary than a lot of cats are still doing it, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I, I just, and he's always been consistent, you know what I'm saying? Now, again, there's always the, you know, <clears throat> I, I will say this, that my influences haven't always been the best role model, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. and, and that's what has motivated me to be that, be that in which I can't find in my influences, you know, being a positive role model, you know, doing community outreach, hoping that, you know, others can see it and be inspired by it. And and so we can, you know, be the change we want to see, you know. Yeah, it's cool, man, you know, because our communities need that change, you know, especially Absolutely. with the black and the brown and yeah, all that man. kind of stuff that's going on. Yeah, there's a lot of divisiveness going on. You yeah, know what I mean? you know, it's a lot of div- oh, divide and conquer kind of thing. Right, you know? real talk, real talk. And then, like, you know, uh, you know, I'm not trying to make your radio show controversial, man. That's you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Because, listen, I don't get interviewed every day. You know what uh, I'm saying? I think this is the first interview I had in two years. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, I just want to say, like, you know, even like Black Lives Matter, you know what I mean? Just speaking on my local chapter, you know, when I see a lot of the movements that they're making, you know, I naturally feel like, oh, I can't get involved in that. You know what I mean? I don't feel included. You know what I'm uh, saying? And uh, these cats know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Everyone knows who I am. You know what I mean? That's that's one thing I don't really like about Pasadena is that everybody around here act like I ain't, like I, I don't even exist. You know what I mean? As man, much as I do. You know, I don't even have a couple of people, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, I, I want to go ahead and say this, man. You know, with this whole Pasadena music scene that I've been working on over the past few years, <clears throat> You know, the struggle is this. You know, I am the artist that I advocate for. So I started Pasadena Music Scene to help give opportunities for independent local artists like myself. And what I've come to realize is a lot of the local uh, media outlets, you know, the premier outlets like the Pasadena Star News and all these other ones that just done popped up. Yeah, they're not scouting locally for talent. You know what I'm saying? And that's what really fueled me with Pasadena Music Scene. But in doing Pasadena music scene, I realized that a lot of the local native artists, rappers to be specific, they they treat me the same way these media outlets do. You know what I mean? They don't acknowledge, you know what I mean? They don't recognize, they don't participate. And, and, you know, to me, it all seems so simple. It's like, yo, let me just get a picture with you. Let me just interview you real quick. And then we can put this thing together. You know what I mean? You know, everyone has their different idea of what, you know, success is and what, I really don't know, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's really one of the struggles I have today with the music scene is that, and one of the harshest realities to accept is that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over here trying to provide a community service for artists. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some of the artists give me that look like some of these whitewashed media outlets do. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, if I got my targeted audience, or not, not even my audience, but my targeted, you know, people to help, you know, you know, turning their backs and, you know, not wanting to, you know, I was just, you know, scrolling on Instagram the other day, and I seen a, a Pasadena rapper that I've been trying to, you know, score an interview with for years now, and, you know, he posted a, a clip of, of some unknown magazine I ain't never heard of, <laughs> you know, they, they put his little song on the thing, and he Instagrammed that, and I'm oh, like, wow. okay, and I left a comment on there, I'm like, yo, man, but when the town do it for you, nothing, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then when yeah, I reach yeah. out to you, nothing. You know? <laughs> and then, you know, cats say things like, uh, I, I mess with who mess with me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, and then yeah. here I am, like, reaching out. You know what I'm you saying? Try to reach out to, you know, help them out. Yeah. And they're refusing us, you know, your service. Exactly. And, and you know, I, there's there's a number of things I can I can think that it is. I, I'll, I'll never really be sure until they say it. But at this point, I'm really ready for them to just say it. Like, yo, I, want, I need to hear you come out of your mouth that you just don't want to work with me. Because, yeah. because from my point of view, there is no reason why not. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'd be quick to get out of my own way to make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like the interviews you do is real jacky when it's like, I remember the one you did with me. You know, yeah, you came yeah. all the way down there to Long Beach, was at the Rebel Bay. You yes, know? sir. Like, it's not like you were asking for some money. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, no, not at all. Not at all. You know what? And, and, and speaking of that, you know, I remember when we went down there and we did it. And then, you know, I had a sense that, that you really appreciated it. You know what I mean? And then that's what really made it worth it for me. And then, you know, we've been, you know, connected ever since. Ever since, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That went from networking to actual, like, friendship and all right. that. That's, you know, that's why I like what you're doing, you know? Yeah, you know, some of my, um, you know, some, some people in my team, you know, they were like, well, you know, why do we, why are we always going to see him perform? You know what I mean? And I'm like, you, you got to understand, like, you know, we, when you came out to the element, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, you came yeah, back yeah. to the bringing it together. And then you came back to another one, I think it was. And, then, you know, I was just like, listen, man, if this cat is coming all the way from Long Beach, you know what I'm saying? We're talking, like, the length of L.A., you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Pasadena and Long Beach is not close together, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, he came out on multiple chords, so I'm like, you know what, listen, you know, the Usulosopher is on the open mic circuit. I think that's a good, not only is it a good networking opportunity, it's a good way to, to show and prove that support that we say we have for each other. You know what I'm saying? And then again, one of the, the motivating factors to, to coming out there supporting you and things like that was that I, I really like what you're doing, man. You got a book. You know what I mean? You write poetry. You know what I mean? And that's just something different. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just one thing if you were, you know, doing poetry and you were just on some, like, you know, video circuit or something like that but you actually have a book though you know what i mean yeah, so you yeah, actually yeah. put a book together got it published you know what i'm saying yeah. and like that's your grind you feel me i like i, I respect that 100 percent. you know what i mean and you clearly stood out you feel me from a lot of you know different poets and, and just artists in general so you I'm know just trying to do my own style and then that's why i'm trying to do this podcast thing you know right I'm trying to get to know more artists you know like build like you know relationships you exactly. know exactly because people yeah. just network and then they don't call them back, you know what I mean? They be like, oh, let me get your information, but they never talk to you. Ever, right, you they know? never call them back up. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. like, when I met you over at the Adam, I was like, damn, you know, it was dope. That's really cool experience, yeah. you know. Got to meet the whole team, you know. Because yeah, it's hard to see that because, you know, you got a lot of egos, too, in this game, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's like talent game, where, whether you're a poet or a rapper and all this, a lot of ego, you know. Yeah, real talk, you know, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to, you know, shout out True Spitters, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, we kind of had to, you know, go our separate ways, you know what I'm saying? Big shout out to Imani Akil, uh, you know, big shout out to Jay Bird, Brandon Bruce, you know, everybody in the squad, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, I, I just felt like, you know, the different, uh, we had different visions, ultimately, you know what I'm saying? And, like, while, while Cats insisted that we didn't have a different, did, while Cats insisted that we had the same vision, you know, I was so convinced otherwise based off of what I was seeing, you know, uh, from them. And, and, and you know, it's been, it's been a few weeks, a couple months, and, and you know, ain't nothing stopped. You know what I mean? As far as passing in the music scene, Wilson Block Magazine, none of that stopped, man. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I don't really see nothing being kicked out from that, from the other side. You know what I mean? So I just, I just want to say that to say, you know what I mean, that we don't have the same vision. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, there, there's still respect there. You know what I'm saying? I, I still look forward to, you know, hearing new music, seeing new, you know, dust being kicked up. You know what I mean? And and, and hopefully, um, you know, that separation can motivate, you know what I mean, people to pursue it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you know, we don't mean any ill will, you know. Right, not at all. all not at all. Two spinners yeah, out absolutely, there, you know? absolutely. And listen, I, I just wanted to put that out there because... You know, since it since our last bringing it together photo shoot in December, oh. you know, it hasn't really been known. You know what I'm saying? And, and <clears throat> I want to make it known because me as an artist, Bing Bing, you know, I was part of True Spitters then. You know what I'm saying? And, and now it, it's it's strictly like Wilson Block 100. But that does not mean that you know we can't be friends. 
Oh, we can't uh, be cordial. You know what I mean? Right, right. Shit, you know? Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, the things that happened, man, you know, I had to remove myself, man, because I, I really felt like, you know, I was being the a-hole. You know what I mean? Uh, because because I knew what I was looking for. You know what I'm saying? I knew the the standard and the quality of what it was supposed to look like. You know what I mean? And, and once it got to a point to where I couldn't object without it being a problem, no matter how much sense it made, you know, that's when I realized that, you know what, maybe I'm not working with the right individuals for me. You know what I mean? For my vision. You, you know gotta, what I'm saying? You got to look out for yourself. You know, by the end of the day, you know, yeah. you got to look out for yourself and what's best for you. And, you know, there's just been a whole a whole lot of stuff in life that, you know, I've been, you know, trying to maneuver through, man. And, you know, you got this music thing and, you know, uh, uh, pretty much this whole art thing that we're trying to make it with. And then, you know, I was, I grew up in foster care my whole life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, weeks after birth all the way till I was 18. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I'm still, I'm, right now, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find my dad, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to find information about my father, my biological father, so it can answer questions about me. Because, you know, at this point, you know, Kaz asked me what you mix with. You know, I really don't know. You know what I'm saying? And that's just something that I would like to know. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, right now, I'm, I'm really, you know, digging in my past and really trying to bring up, you know, certain things that require certain people to revisit their past, you know what I mean? And it's it's, it's not easy for them. You know what I mean? And, and and it's hard for me to accept that because why do why do I have to suffer because somebody doesn't wanna cooperate or because you don't you don't want to revisit that time of your life where, you know, something was where well, you're ashamed of maybe. I, I don't know, you know. But uh that's that's one of the things that's really, you know, clouding my life right now is uh, you know, trying to find out who my dad is. The cold part about it is the only way I can find my dad is if I if I go national. You know what I'm saying? I have to come out national. You know what I mean? That's the, I got to be on Good Morning America or something. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's a because, show or something. Yeah, because exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I don't I don't have much details on him. You know what I mean? And and you know I just don't feel like you know the right people were, were giving me the right details. You know what I mean? Uh, you know I just don't feel like she saw a lot of beat around the bush type shit. Yeah, like, man. You know? Yeah. Man, he's just running back into a wall. You know what I mean? I, you know, I gotta ask certain questions a certain way to get it out. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I gotta keep hitting this wall to where it's like, hold on, but, but I'm the one that's left in a disposition. You know what I'm saying? To where I can't get any type of explanation. I can't get any type of no. I just have to accept the fact that, you know, kids. I'm the I'm that kid that had to suffer from the dysfunctional relationship. And that's, and that's that's hard to swallow, man. Yeah, that's you know hard, I mean? man. That took a lot of courage and strength to get through. Like, yeah, how'd you go through that growing up, man, being in the foster care system? Like? <laughs> well, you know what, man? I, I've been waiting for the world to ask me that, man. You know what I mean? Real talk, because I can talk to you about this, man. Now, usually, you know, more times than not, you get foster kids who have a negative testament about the foster care system. But me, I have a positive, somewhat of a positive testament because, you know, foster care allowed me to do things. You know what I mean? As opposed to, you know, when I was 18 and reunited with my biological family, I kind of saw how, you know, I had more of a chance at life being in foster care. You know what I'm saying? Where I was able to get my three square meals for show. You know what I mean? Where I was able to get to school and have clean clothes and allowances and all of this stuff. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I'm not, not so mad at foster care because the bottom line is this, man. Life's messed up. You know what I'm saying? Whether you in at home an institution, it don't matter where you at, you know what I mean, so because I understand that, you know, the foster care wasn't so bad, you know what I mean, and, and it's helped me, it was, uh, I really credit uh, Bernice Taylor, Bernice Taylor was uh, a lady who coincidentally had the same last name as me, uh, and uh, she was the one, she was my first long-term foster parent from shortly after birth until I was eight, and, uh, you know, she's the one that taught me, you know, respect and common courtesy. She's the one that taught me not to stare at strangers, to say please and thank you. All of these core values that I carry with me today, you know what I mean? She, you know, taught me those things. And uh, in 2011, you know, she was, she passed away to Alzheimer's. And that explains my, uh, my, uh, how do you say, my mission to help, you know, join the fight 
against Alzheimer's. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's, it remains to this day as, as one of the most tragic events of my life. You know what I'm saying? Losing my mom to something like that. And, and especially the way that I got the phone call, I was not ready for it. And, uh, you know, it's, it, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm bringing all this, all of this up to say that I'm talking about a lot of this in, in my upcoming mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not even gonna drop the title right now because uh, I'm still, you know, I'm still, I'm still uh, working on it. Yes, yeah, so, you know, there's still some titles that I'm trying to, you know, pick from. But uh, you know, in this new one, uh, it still has like a beautiful struggle type feel, and uh, I'm talking about a lot of my frustrations with, you know, not being, not being deserving enough to know the truth. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. You know, being, you know, misplaced and displaced and all of this type of stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I really want to express this so that, you know, people can understand where I'm coming from. You know what I mean? That's cool, man. Hey, um, what about your music, man? Because I always listen to your music on the SoundCloud, man. Yeah, man. Beautiful Struggle. Yes, sir. Man, it's real. You know, it's, just, it's a refresher to people's ears, you know, because yeah. you get tired of that mainstream crap, man. Yeah, like, man. Yeah. tired of the... Your faces, you know man, what I mean? real talk, you literally <laughs> dumped you down. You know what I mean? It's a program and a conditioning. And that's why like I reject it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and, and so, you know, it, it's just unfortunate that some artists that come up, you know, they start that way and then and then they try to flip it and be a conscious rapper. It's just not happening. You know what I mean? I'm already turned off. You know what I mean? Yeah. To be honest, like even Macklemore, you know, at first, man, I remember walking through Target seeing his album on the shelf and I was like, man, ain't nobody. Buy that. <laughs> like, like real talk. Yeah, you're like, like everybody won't buy that shit. Right, like, I remember back in the day when uh when when rapper the game right yeah, when he, yeah, when he came game. out with uh the documentary. Yeah, documentary, yo. Man, listen, I was getting ready for school one morning yeah. and I was watching BET and he was on 106 and Park and I remember very vividly I was like, man, ain't nobody about to buy your album, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, I had his whole album memorized. Like, I can yeah, still yeah, rap yeah. the whole documentary by I the game, the album, you know what I mean? Game, yeah. So, you know, you know, when I started rapping, you know, when you listen to, let me just give you the discography real quick, you know, oh, uh, you know, in 2008, well, really, it was, I uh, recorded in 2008, but January 2009, I dropped my first mixtape, The West Kept Secret, Volume 1, you know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of it was, it was my first project, you know, I, I mixed it myself, recorded it myself and wrote the lyrics and uh if you listen to that stuff man there's a lot of you know i was, I was talking about shooting niggas and you know fucking bitches you oh, know what i mean just all about, of the typical it's all right here, bro. Right. All right, right. <laughs> well you know i was doing the typical rapper thing oh, right yeah, you know because you know because you know society had me believe that that's what i wanted you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. but it really wasn't you know uh, and so that's the deception people you know what i'm saying yeah. you gotta you know no because listen i just want to say this real quick you know, I remember, because listen, there was a time in my life where I, I made that decision, like, no, I'm not going to be a dumbass nigga, man. I'm, just, I, I'm not going to choose to be a dumb person. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? So look, you got the West Kept Secret Volume 1. Wow. Then I dropped the West Kept Secret V2, right, which was online only. This was back when Exangle was up, and Exangle went down, and so, you know, V2 was online only. It was pretty much everything that didn't make Volume 1. So that was pretty much... It, never happened really and so then i came with the west kept secret v3 official you know what i mean it was yeah. you know ep with 17 tracks you know what i mean yeah. and uh you know i was still kind of in that rapper phase like you know still talking about the bs right yeah, yeah and i mean i always had touching tracks though you know what i mean i always talked about my life you know what i mean even with the bull, you know Whatever. but when i dropped then i dropped the bull speed v1 this was april 2010 and a lot of people, like my family, a lot of people, they like that one. You know what I mean? It came with 21 cuts. It was cool. It was supposed to be the West Kev V3, but there was technicalities in the mix. So after the Bull Speed V1, I dropped the West Kev Secret uh, V3 official. You know what I mean? And I was officially V3. And uh, with that one, I think it had like 14 cuts on it. Uh, it was pretty much the 
the best. You run out of time? No, nah, we got a lot. We still got a lot of time. Right. Yeah, so pretty much I just wanted to uh, drop. V3 was a big project for me. It was 2011, shortly. But, you know, that was around the time when I realized that, okay, I'm not about to just be making this old fuckboy shit no more. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, that shit. Yeah, man. Because, you know, after a while, it was just like, listen, I had to come to a realization. And I have this question for a lot of people my age is that I got to a point in my life to where I was like, listen, if I'm not shooting niggas, I'm not going to rap about that. Yeah. Because Preach. ain't nobody, because to be honest, my main thing was like, ain't nobody about to tell me nothing yeah. for anything. Like, that I, I'm not about to do nothing wrong or, you know, be sidestepping, you know, and, and then somebody come and correct me when I could have just paid attention to begin with, you know what I mean, and did it right to begin with, you know. Yeah. So, you know, around... 2011, 2012 is when I really started taking serious the message of my music. Uh, and so, in 2012, you know what I mean, I dropped, you know what I mean, which I would call one of my most marquee projects, you know what I'm saying, the Music in Me mixtape, you know what I mean? It was a very, very uh, inspirational uh, mixtape for me, you know what I mean? And especially the title track, Music in Me, shout out Mr. Green. Uh, Mr. Green's a very dope producer. In fact, you know, I went ahead and made the whole mixtape off of his beats, most of them. Um, and he's from, uh, I believe, Philly or Jersey or somewhere on the East Coast over here. And uh, he, he does some pretty cool stuff. And so after dropping the Music Give Me mixtape, I came with the Haters Favorite EP with Pokey Low. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out Pokey Low. Uh, and we also helped him work on the Great Area mixtape, his debut solo mixtape, which is fire. I got the feature on there. And then uh, after the haters' favorite was the beautiful struggle. You know what I'm saying? And, and the beautiful struggle, man. Look, man. Look, you had music in me in 2012. You had the haters' favorite EP, which wasn't supposed to be an EP, but because we couldn't finish the project, I made it an EP and put it out. And that was 2013. So beautiful struggle didn't come till 2016. You know what I'm saying? Three years. Three years. It took me three years to write it because it just took me three years to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, a lot of stuff was written for the most part. There were like, you know, uh, a few bars at the last, you know, at the last, at the end of verses that I just had to finish and things like that. And then, you know, my studio situation was kind of shaky. So, you know, I wasn't able to, you know, put, you know, make the track listing as long as I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? I still have those songs uh, ready to drop. You know what I mean? But, you know, there was a time in those three years where I was just like, listen, man, I don't push this thing back far enough. You know, Cats was really ready. You know, Cats was still like, when I was telling him, like, hold on, a beautiful struggle. It, like, it ain't came yet. It's still coming. You know, Cats were looking at me like, hold on, we was talking about that back in 2014. Like, <laughs> like I thought that was out already. You know, I was just like, nah, it ain't came out. I was just promoting it that long. And uh, that's when I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give it a date. And I'm going to stick to this date. You know what I mean? Not for any reason. I'm not pushing it back. And so I remember I had set the date in, like, uh, spring or summer. I think it was spring. It was, like, the late end of spring, 2015 or something like that. And uh, I I said August 20th, 2016 is coming out regardless. You know what I'm saying? August 20th, 2016 rolled around, and I only had nine cuts. You know what I mean? So uh, what I did was, you know, I shifted them all into a – uh, a radio show, you know, to kind of make it sound like a radio, you know, I, you know, DJs host mixtapes and things oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, I tried to do my own little twist to that. And uh, if you ask me, man, it sounds great. You know, shout out to everyone that gave shout outs on the project, Relly Dose. Uh, shout out um, uh, Butch Thompson, you know what I'm saying? Shout out, you know, everybody, you know, Dominance, you know what I'm saying? Uh, big shout out to, to Dominic Poole, you know what I'm saying? That's my boy, you know what I mean? Boy, you know, that's the cat that, you know, we did. We went on all the major walks, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still thinking about starting to do another one. You know, it's just that, listen, man, I'm, today I'm 27. You know, I'm not a kid anymore, and that's something hard to accept, you know what I'm saying? Because I always like to retain my innocence factor, you know? But uh, before I just do anything these days, man, I, I just, I, you know, I don't want to do anything just prematurely anymore. You know what I'm saying? Before it was like, you know, we're going to walk 33 miles because I feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and we going to do it, you know, and we did it, you know, but and he had a good cause to it. And, then, you know, people insist that we get sponsorships. You know, I'm like, listen, 
I don't got time to wait. See that this is the struggle. That's this is the struggle with being an artist for me. Like, listen, I don't have time to wait for you producers to make my sound. I don't have time to to wait to meet you. I don't have time to for these businesses and sponsors to be trying to see what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, I've already reached out. Like, I don't got time to do the runaround with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do it. You know, and the way I see it is like. You know, we do a 27-mile walk for whatever reason. We reach out to people that don't reach back out. We're going to do it anyway. And we have that leverage. You know what I'm saying? We can say that we did that, not be lying, and, and we can prove it. And, you know, what politician can, can say that? You know what I mean? One thing I've learned is that, you know, when I do come around, you know, it does hold a little weight. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that 50-mile walk, though, you know. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, I'm not going with you, Bing, but, you know what I mean? That's what people say, so... You know, I, I just, I did it all gracefully, you know what I'm saying? And just hoping that, you know, I can, you know, change my own life in the process. You know what I'm saying? Fortunately, uh, I don't know what the world is paying their attention to these days. I really oh, yeah. don't. I really don't. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's hard, man. It's hard. It, it's, it's too hard. And sometimes, like, it makes me, it makes me appreciate my own life. You know what I'm saying? Because, because I feel like I'm in the way. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, damn, you know, I, I was just a kid that wanted to do that, too. You know what I'm saying? And when you get older, you realize that there's a trillion people here. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's yeah. just like, it's just like, yo, you got to figure out a way, bro. And, and it's hard because you'll see, like, you'll see, like, The Source or, or Double XL, right? They'll be uh, talking about, you know, the name of a rapper. And then that, that, that rapper name might be your name. And then you'll be like, hold on, but I'm him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's just like, you know, who, who, who who gets to say who is who in society, you know what I'm saying? But oh, yeah. it's just it's just very competitive, you know what I mean? And uh, I just think that me personally, uh, I, I've done far too much, you know what I'm saying, to still be somewhat in the same position, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and my main thing has been just wanting to, you know, it's never been about the money for me, ever, you know what I'm saying? Tell, I mean, you know, aside from the fact that, you know what I mean, I would like to be self-sufficient. I would like to take care of myself. Because that's all that's got to eat, too, you know? Exactly, you know? exactly. And then, you know, I look up and I see, you know, punk-ass rappers like Lil Yachty doing Sprite commercials. You yeah. know, like, like, yo, like, 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 yo. And then, and then I'll see Sprite, you know, they'll do, they had a Tupac billboard. It's like, look, don't do that. Hey, yo, Sprite, yeah. don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like first of all, real rappers drink Sprite, and real rappers ain't fucking with Lil Yachty. Okay, first of all. <laughs> nah, second of all, y'all niggas wasn't sponsoring Tupac when he was alive, nigga. So don't put that nigga on your bill. Don't do that to try to sell your drink. You know what I mean? Sprite is good enough as it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and so th when things like that happen, you know what I'm saying? It makes me just kind of uh, not want that anymore. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that fame and exactly. all that. Exactly. So now, like, I'm really looking into into something else, man. Like, I mean, that's why I do so much. You know what I mean? Not just rap. You know what I mean? Yeah, Not you're doing just... a block. You're doing yeah. it all. Yeah, like, I'm always... That's a always, music scene. Yeah. Right. I'm going to always create, man. Like, that's that's one of, and one of the songs that I got coming out. is called Regardless. And it's like, you know, I'm going to be a winner regardless. What what I say? Uh... I'm a winner regardless, cause nigga, my heart's in it regardless. You know what I mean? Oh, like, it, 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 it's just oh, so, man. it's so real. Uh, I can't wait to deliver it, man. It's just, it's another one of them scenarios where I just got a few more bars to finish on the last verse. You know what I mean? I can't wait to hear that new music, you know, that new baby, man. I always love listening to Yeah, man. Yeah. You know? hey, listen, man. Quiet is kept. I ain't put out no, no leaks or, or no hints that I'm coming out with a new project. But I just want to drop it on people unexpectedly just to show them that, nigga, I do this, too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I do the rap, the music, the magazine, the boop, bop, wham, and, you know what I mean? And, and consistent with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so this new project that I'm coming with, there's a few titles, but there's one title that I'm leaning towards because it it's it's it, it differentiates. Like, you know how, uh like, there was this rapper, RJ. I don't know if you know about RJ. Oh, I know RJ. That yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. He did, like, a couple songs with G. Malone. Or right. Yeah. So he, he, uh, he got, he came out with the Amio. Next right. day, Amio. The Amio. You know what I mean? And then I think it was, like, on oh, my mama, I'm on. Or it was an acronym for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Something like that. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, when I, when I first heard him say Amio, or no, when I first started reading it, I, I didn't know how to spell it. If it was Omeo or Amio. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? coming with and then when i heard him say it i saw i was like oh man that's cool like you know what i mean so different so so what i want to do with my next project is i want to come with 
something that is unique, right? And something that you ain't going to hear nowhere else. This is not just another, you know, against against the grain mixtape or, you know, uh, you know, Rapper's Delight mixtape or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Just something. common titles. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm coming yeah. with something different to where when you hear this title, you know what artist it came from. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking at, you know, it's a little too early to, to you know, put a release date or anything like well, that. I'm still working on it. Yeah. But uh, expect it this year. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. I, I want to drop it probably like, you know, fall, winter this year. But realistically, winter, you know what I mean? And so, winter 2017, you know, that might be February 2018, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So, shit, we got like five minutes left on this. You know, okay, no doubt, no doubt. But, um, you know, what, what's your message to the youth and what will you do if you want a million dollars, man? Uh, you know, my message to the youth, man, is, is, to, is to be positive, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, ask questions, you know what I'm saying? If something don't seem right, Ask a question, man. Pay attention to all red flags, you know what I'm saying? And if you got it in you, you know, please, you know, use your influence for the betterment of everybody around you, man. It means everything. You know what I mean? If I'm going to be a positive role model, who's going to be that positive role model for me? You know what I'm saying? And if I had a million dollars, <laughs> Pasadena Music Scene have its own building right now. We'd be a full-fledged nonprofit community art center. And uh, we'd be putting, you know, uh, college students and things like that to work. You know what I'm saying? And that's really the vision. You know what I mean? It's to, it's to create a community art center and not have uh, uh, pretty much a nonprofit record label concept. You know what I'm that's saying? Not cool right and, and, and listen, you know, some people can't say it's done. They say it's not done. Some people tried it. People don't have juice. You know what I'm saying? They don't have vision for it. You know what I mean? Like when I wake up in the morning, I know how to take this little leaf right here and write a story about it. I can write an essay about this leaf. I really can. Like off the yeah. top of my head. And like even though I can't freestyle, I can freestyle right. You know what I mean? Pretty well. So, you know, that's like me too. You know, I like poetry, but I don't like freestyle, you know? Right, exactly. I can write it, you know what I mean? Right. Just come with it, you know? No doubt. So uh, make sure y'all check out my website, the Wilson Block Magazine dot com. That's the with an A. You know what I mean? Wilson Block One Hundred Radio. We do Wilson Block Wednesdays on the YouTube. Subscribe on our YouTube, uh, Pasadena Music Scene Facebook and Instagram. Comment spelling and uh, reach out, man. I'm looking for artists to interview. You know what I'm saying? I'm really gracious to you know be on a low fast. You know what I'm saying with your boy who's You know oh, and uh, you know it's, it's it's been great, man. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate you on the show, big baby. No doubt. You know, you know we know. was trying to make this happen for a minute too. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, man. I kept pushing it, kept pushing it. All this stuff happening. You know what I mean? Yes, it's sir. True, man. Yeah, listen to us all. Go on the SoundCloud. Listen to his music, man. Bing Bing, man. Just type up Bing Bing. Go yeah, on the SoundCloud. In, yeah, type in the Bing Bing. That's T H A Bing Bing, all one word. And you can also Facebook that too. And, and check me out, man. I'm, I'm I'm on a mission, man. On a mission to make a difference. He's, you know, really making a difference out there, man. Any artists out there, contact them, man. He does little podcast interviews. You can be on the Wilson Block magazine. Set them up, man. But uh, this is your host, the Uso Lossford. Thank you all for listening to Alofa's Arts Love, Outreach, Family, Adversity, Success. One love. God bless you all. Mr. Green. And let me tell you how it happened, Jack. I had the weed, but I ain't feel the need to have the run. Police rolling on a nigga like I had a gun. Ready to spray me with only your wrist and cap and scum. And I'd have had enough of backing up. Revenge is too sweet for me to be passing up. Hey, yo, while them niggas was sitting laughing and acting tough, I was the only one left that was standing up. Shit, I guess they wasn't man enough. Niggas would die before they be they self. A coward is will before he deal with the cards that he was dealt. Acting like life ain't hard for no one else and still. People do a lot of popping at the grill. My mother died, no one cared, so it's fuck how you feel. Chill. I know it's been a minute, my music is driven. So when I freestyle, so what if it's written, my nigga? It's just, just music in me. It's just the music in me. It's in me. It's just music in me. In me. It's just the music in me. It's in me. It's just music in me. Yeah, me, yeah, me. You 
thought it was when it wasn't. Look, I don't give a fuck if niggas can't handle the truth and want to get the fuzzes. I don't like when niggas act on their emotions and niggas step on your toes and like you feel the need to break this no sense. Kind of twisted how niggas be catching feelings, getting extra sensitive with Mr. Wilson in the building. I'm not here to cause any trouble, but get rebuttal the motherfuckers who got it without going through the struggles. Yeah, in times of trouble, keep a humble head. Chase money, I'd rather suffer hunger till I'm dead, nigga. You don't understand me, yeah, that's what I said, nigga. Cause I can never be the next misled, nigga. If you ain't ready to kill, then you ain't ready to die. So step aside, I ain't steady with pride. It never gets better forever to die. I'm just trying to get you something to remember me by. Bing, bing, gone. Just live up to your potential. Coming from South Central, it's no excuse. Not even my mental health issues. Industry officials, in the street pistols, military missiles, medicinal misuse, chemicals and crystals. It's crazy what this game will do to you. Just don't let it make a fool of you. Stay true to you. Please pray for me, make a way for me, pave the way for me. I ain't cool with the games that they play with me. Oh no, it ain't okay with me, it ain't okay with me, no. Please pray for me, come hang with me, run away with me. I ain't cool with the things that they take from me. I guess there ain't no place for me, there ain't no place for me, no. Please pray for me, 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 pray for
pray for me, make a way for me, take the way for me. I ain't cool with the games that you play with me. Oh no, it ain't okay with me. It ain't okay with me, no. Please pray for me, come hang with me, run away with me. I ain't cool with the things that they take from me. I guess there ain't no place for me, there ain't no place for me, no.